just one last question because uh, the, again this wasn't on the list but uh, I you mentioned something about using AI for climate uh, climate change mm -hmm. and using it for combating climate change I would say so I don't have a lot of um, research done on, on my personal legend like how how exactly we are using uh, machine learning for uh, combating climate change but can you get from, just from an application perspective we don't have to be really technical but how do you how how have you seen machine learning really uh, having a great prospect of combating climate change and what what is your research focus or what are your projects that you are trying to focus on for doing that yeah so there are a bunch and a lot of them originate from uh, working with satellite imagery so if you're in computer vision there are lots of things you can detect and predict in satellite imagery for example deforestation or understanding even the placement of renewable energy or the placement and attribution so you can blame where fossil fuels are coming from. Um, so you could do all of those things at the satellite imagery level where it would just be really tedious to have humans look through billions of images, like billions and everything is in billions there. So it's huge. Um, so the scale is suitable for, uh, I think AI machine learning. Um, and then of course, uh, not always just in images, you could also look at uh, tabular data or some kind of time series data as well. Uh, for example, for uh, predicting uh, solar PV output, so solar panels, how much um, are solar panels actually, uh, how much energy are they actually able to get? Um, that renewable energy, predicting that at a certain location is very hard. We don't understand how clouds work. Actually, the physics of it are very, very complex. Um, and we don't understand it completely, like from a physics point of view. So um, being able to model some of those interactions is really useful. Uh, and in general, this area suffers from a lack of funding, I think, the climate change space. So I think any lift you can give uh, is can be very, very helpful. Uh, there. And I, I will say that area is more politically charged than healthcare, arguably. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's true, actually. I don't know. <laughs> Both are highly regulated, politically charged. And I would say healthcare is more businessy and um, climate is more, you know, government regulation y. Um, but of course, both are both. Uh, and um, yeah, there is a lot less money going into it. And so um, it's about very much just dedicating your time to seeing what some of the problems are, where the data is just really not clean and where you can help with um, cohesively putting together a nice data set or repository or database of where we're, wind turbines are, for example, which is a project that we've, we've done. And on the GAN side, on generative model side, um, one project that I really love that I collaborated with uh, Joshua Bengio's lab, Amila, is, um, we generated flood scenes of any Google Street View image. And that was to kind of make it possible so that anyone could viscerally feel the effects of climate change. So you can put it in your house yeah. and get flooded if we have a few <laughs> degrees of warming. Yeah, it's because we've read like, you know, climate communications literature says uh, people need to see it to believe it, not just like graphs. You know, graphs are not gonna tell you, oh, look, like one or two degrees of warming, you're not gonna, you're not going to change your lifestyle based on that, but an image might do it if it's close to home, uh, very literally close to home. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I, I guess uh, that data set itself calls for making a movie, I guess, just to scare off people, I guess. <laughs> a new Google Earth of uh, Atlantis, basically. Google uh, Earth Atlantis. 